asifiwe. And because of time, um, I'm so delighted to bring God's word to be used as a vessel. Not because I'm the, the most chosen one, but uh, God chose me to be here today. And I hope that you go home with something that God wants you to know. Um, my mother is in the house. The woman who beat me to summarize Psalms 1, verse 1 to 6. My mom, stand up wherever you are. Oh, here she is. I, did, I thought she was sitting there. That's my mother. If you bear my name tongue, kindly stand. One second. So th this is my mom. Alini Champa ni Jue Psalms. Tuko tuwa Champa kila usiku. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits with seats of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And he meditates the law day and night. Eh? And he's like a tree planted by the, by the waters, whose leaf does not wither. And I will see it in Kikamba. Can you clap for this woman of God? Thank you. And she will also tell you I was the most naughtiest child that she ever gave birth to. But we thank God for his goodness. Buona si fiwe. Um, I want to share God's word. Um, and we will read. And I've entitled the message of my sharing. The journey. Tell your neighbor the journey. And the journey, if you want to give a subtopic, you'd say it took all of that to get me here. So if you're writing, it took me all of that to get me where? Even you, where you are in life. And we are going to look at the character called Paul. And we know the story of Paul. And just to give a summary, we see the conversion. The first soul is mentioned, or Paul is mentioned as soul in chapter 8 of the book of Acts. And this is when Stephen was killed. And when Stephen was killed, Saul was there, right there. And the Bible says there was a young man named Saul towards the end of the chapter 8 of the book of Acts. Then in chapter 9, it begins with this persecution in the church in chapter 8. After, the, after Jesus left the earth, he promised his disciples that he would send them a helper. That is according to when Jesus was leaving the earth. That is Acts chapter 1 and 2. So in chapter 1, verse 8, we see Jesus telling them, you will receive what? power and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of to the ends of the earth. Then in chapter 9 we see the conversion of Paul. Paul now started, he was a Pharisee, he started now persecuting the church on believers. So in chapter 9 he meets with the Lord Jesus Christ well, he was going to Damascus. And I know we know that story. I'm just giving, I'm, I'm giving a ground of my sharing. And I've said I'm using the character who? Saul. Who is Paul? So in chapter 9, we see Saul was going to, to Damascus to persecute the church. And then he meets with Jesus. When he meets with Jesus... We know the story, the light came from heaven, shone on his path, he fell, and he heard the voice of Jesus speaking to him. Then in chapter 9, in chapter 9, verse 15 of the book of Acts, and uh, I mentioned it in the first service, we see God telling Ananiah to go and pray for Paul, and he's telling Ananiah the mission or the purpose that he had for Saul. And we can have uh, the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 15, which said, but the Lord, let's read. Go, 
for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. When, when God was giving that, that mission of Paul, or purpose, he had you in mind. Imagine. Because you are a Gentile. You were mentioned in the Gentiles. You were, we were not the Israelites. So he said, he is to bear my name, the name of God, to the Gentile community, to the Israelites, and to all. And today we are beneficiaries of the writings of Paul, isn't it? And that's why I want to share, based on the character of Paul, the character of Paul, and I've, as I've said, I'm entitled The Journey. So Paul is converted, he accepts Jesus, he's gone, he's prayed for by Ananias. And when you see in chapter 21, just to give a background, and I want to give you the CV of Paul. One, Paul understood different languages. He was a Benjaminite. Benjamite. He came from the tribe of Benjamin. He was also, that means he was from a, the, a king's lineage. You remember the other soul came from the, the tribe of Benjamin, isn't it? Paul was also a Pharisee. And we know what the role the Pharisees played in the Bible during Jesus' time on earth. So he was one of those teachers of law. He studied the law, and he knew it in and out. And he was able to speak different languages. And when I say different languages, it was beyond the church vernacular. He was able to speak business language. And as we look at the journey of Paul, as he entered to his destiny, which was Rome, Paul went through a lot of things. But at the end of it all, God took him to the destiny, which was Rome. So walk with me together as we, we start God's word. So we'll start in chapter 21, and I will paraphrase because it's a lot of reading. Chapter 21, we see Paul's journey to Jerusalem. Paul has been converted. He's gone back to Jerusalem. And he's going there. The Jews plotted to kill him. The Jews plotted to kill him. So he gets to Jerusalem, he's arrested in verse 17 of chapter 21. Let's read. And when we were, and when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us grandly, and the, day, the following day, okay, let's read all of us. But they are being informed about you that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children nor walk according to the custom. What then? The assembly must certainly meet, for they will hear what you have come. Therefore, do what we will tell you. We are four men who have taken a vow. Take them and be fulfilled by them, and pay their expenses so that they may shape their ends, and that all may know that those things of which they were informed concerning you are nothing, but that you as yourself also walk orderly to keep the law.
Now when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against the people, the law, and this place. And furthermore, he also brought Greeks into the temple and sanctified the holy place. For they had previously seen the trumpets on the Ephesian with him in the city, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was disturbed, and the people ran together, seized Paul, and dragged him out of the temple, and immediately was shut. Now as they were seeking to kill him, news came to the commander that the garrison that all Jerusalem was in uproar. He immediately took soldiers and centurion and ran down to them. And when they saw the commander, the soldiers, they stopped beating. Then the commander came near and took him and commanded him to and asked who he was and what he had done. And some among the multitude cried one thing and some another. So when he could not ascertain the truth because of the tumult, he commanded him to be taken into the barracks. When he reached the stairs, he had to be carried by the soldiers because the violence of the mob. For the multitude of people followed after crying out, away with him. Then as Paul was brought to be led into the barracks, he said to the commander, May I speak to you? He replied, Can you speak Greek? Are you not the Egyptians who some time ago stirred up the rebellion and led the 4,000 assassins out of the wilderness? But Paul said, I am a Jew from Tarsus, a Syria, a citizen of no mean city, and I implore you, permit me to speak to the people. So when he had given him permission, Paul stood on the stairs and measured with his hand to the people. And they, they were there in great silence. He spoke to them in the Hebrew language, saying, Brethren and fathers, hear my defense before you now. And when they heard this, he spoke to them in the Hebrew language. They kept all more silent than he said. Verse 3. I am indeed a Jew born in Tarsus or Sicilia. Fighting and delivering into the prison both men and women. We can pause there. It's a long reading. But I just want to take you through the journey of Paul. And remember I've said he was going to Rome. Because he had promised and prayed that one day he would go to Rome. And remember when God called him and he said he was to be a vessel of honor to bear God's name to the Gentiles and to the Israelites. So the the Jews wanted to kill Saul, as we've read. And they also, had the, some of the brethren had a plan on how Saul would, or Paul would escape. But Paul, because he knew he had a destiny and he had a purpose, he chose to remain in Jerusalem. And as I've said, when he was caught and he asked for permission to speak, he made them understand that he was a, a Jew and he was also a citizen of Rome. So in chapter 23, um, chapter 24, Paul is appearing before a, a governor called Felix, or in the barrack that we have read that he was sent to. And this guy, 
was not able to sort out the problem because he could say, oh, there's a certain guy that was brought into my barracks. I don't know. They're talking about a name. She's talking about this man, Jesus. You know, when people don't know exactly what Christianity is all about, they can say anything. So he didn't know what to do with Saul because the Jews wanted him killed. They had a plot, but now he was taken to a barracks. And then now this Felix guy resigned or left work or office without sorting out Paul's case. And I want to assure you that in all this, God was with, God was with Paul. So Paul remains in the barracks until another governor called Felix, Festus came, came to the office. And that is in, um, that is in chapter 24. Festus came into the office and he wanted to hear the, the case of Paul. And before he went, he went to Jerusalem and then the Jews, the same Jews that were plotting to kill Paul, said, we have a case. We have a, an inmate in your barracks. And we want, his case, you, we want you to win the case in our favor. So Festus went and wanted to hear this story. So he calls Paul. And it happened in chapter 25, there was a visiting king of Agrippa and Barnes. You will go and read this. I'm just giving the summary because we've read. But remember I've said... It, take, it took all this to, to have me here. So Paul is put in chain. And remember, God has said, he has given the end result and he said, this is the vessel to bear my, my name. But Paul is now in chain. He's in prison. He's in barrack. So I would want to pause there and ask. Up to that point, here is Saul. He's been put in prison. Yet God had said, he will bear his name where? To the Gentiles and to the Jews. And it may look like the hope had gotten to a dead hand. But God, because God is a God of miracles, is so powerful, is a God of plan, his plan can never be thwarted. King Agrippa is brought into the hearing of this case, and he says, I find this man. He has not committed an offense. And Paul had to ask for permission to express or to defense, to depend, uh, to, def to give his defense. So he is given a chance and he appears before King Agrippa and um, Barnes and he, he narrates his case. So the king advises, and prior to hearing of uh, King Agrippa, Paul had also told the same things to Festus. But Festus, because he had been lured by the Jews to do the favor according to their wish to kill. So they wanted him to be killed. But now Festus is confused which decision to make. So when King Agrippa visited, and I want you to see God in this story. Because God now causes this King Agrippa to be in the city and to be in the palace of, King, of Festus. And now Festus allows him to listen to Paul's story. And when Paul appears, he spoke. And he had, long, he had known King Agrippa, so he addresses King Agrippa and tells him and shares the gospel. Remember, Paul was called to share the gospel of Christ. So he continues, and in chapter 26, because I'm ended to where I want to share in today, um, King Agrippa agrees, this man has not committed an offense. I don't see, so release him. But Festus is like, uh, you remember he had promised the Jews that he will win the case in their favor. So Paul is now, because he had appealed to go to the Caesar, because he was a citizen of Rome, in as much as he was born a Jew by birth. He was also a citizen of Rome. So he goes, uh, he's put in a ship, and he goes with other 276 inmates or people who are in chain. And I want to, to encourage someone today. You have come to church today. And God has a purpose for your life. But you feel there are things that have tied you. Things that have withheld you from moving to your next destiny of your life. Or going to where God has called you or said you will be in this life. So Paul is put in chain and is taken to go and appear before Caesar. And remember, Paul has, desire, has always undesired to go to Rome. And this was his desire. 
to impact a spiritual gift. Bwana sifiwe. Praise God. So the journey is, Paul is takes a journey, and the journey begins. And in chapter 26, 27, they sail to Rome, and they begin, uh, we can have verse 1 of chapter 27, projected, and when it, uh, it was determined that we should sail to Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners into one named Julius Centurion of Augustus Band. So chapter 27 gives us the story. Now they are sailing. They are going to Rome. So as they started their journey, there was a storm. And in verse 13, we read, and when the, sound, when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing, losing ends, they sailed close to Crete. So they had gotten to Crete, and the wind was getting stronger, stronger and stronger. And remember, if you've forgotten, I've said I'm sharing on the journey. And each one of us in, uh, in the discipleship class, we, we have a booklet that we call it Starting Your Journey with God. And this will share your story. And I want to encourage someone, when you gave your life to Christ, you started a journey. And we are using the character Paul to see how our salvation or God, the destiny that God has called each one of us, at times, it can be faced by so many things. But as long as God is with you, you can be assured your destiny is sure. So they start sailing to Rome, and they, in, uh, they get to Crete, and the wind is so, so much. And here Paul gets a vision. You know, there's no hope. The wind is blowing like no business, no one business. And now they are to throw even the, some of the cargo that they had carried to there to the water, at least the, that the ship would get lighter. But as, even as they did this, the wind or the storm continued to blow. And in this journey of salvation, God has called each one of us. There will be storms. One as if you were. Tell your neighbor there will be storms. Storms is part of the life that God has called us in salvation. So they meet this huge storm, and this, the story in chapter 27 tells us they are even to throw their cargo, they are to, to make sure their ship is. And then Paul gets a, a vision, and he gets a vision in, um, in verse 23, and let's read in, in the book of Acts, chapter 27, verse 23. Let's read. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, whom I belong and I serve. Verse 24. Saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail you with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told to me. So remember the inner storm, and here is Paul. Paul who has never been trained in any sailing business. Paul is not like Peter who was a, a boat operator. You know the story of Peter in the Bible? Peter was one of the disciples of Jesus. But here is Paul. He's given a revelation word by God in an area whereby he has no training in. One as if he were. Remember I said Paul understood different languages. So he's given a vision by God and he's told. The destiny is sure. You will get to your end where you must. And he's told you must appear. So he's encouraging. The verse that we've read is encouraging the people that he was sailing with. Because now the centurion that was entrusted with these other inmates was wondering, now what do we do? And they had planned to kill them. Imagine the 276. They wanted to kill them because now they were like, now we may not make it to where we are going because of this storm. And I want to encourage someone. In this journey of salvation, maybe you're wondering, you came to church today and things are not working. Things are not working in your office. Things are not working in your business. Things are not working everywhere you are. 
But I have a word for you this morning that God is saying that the destiny is sure. It doesn't matter the storm. Look up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He's committed to take you to your destiny. Buana Sifiwe. He's very much committed despite what is surrounding you this morning. But I want to encourage someone. It doesn't matter. God has a word for you this morning. That you came to church. Discouraged. You don't know about the next week. You do not know about tomorrow. But God is saying, focus unto me. Your destiny is in my hands. And you must sure appear before Caesar. Buana Sifiwe. And this is what the Lord is saying today. Remember, Paul has been given a word. And remember, the inmates that the people they were with, maybe they were not believers. And here he has to speak about the word. Have you ever been sent to people and you know, and you know, and especially your family? <laughs> people that have known you, people that know you very well, and you have a message from God. Yeah? And they don't listen to you, they look at you. Some of you, we have so many people of our relatives that are not born again. But what do we pray? That the other people will go and share the gospel. Because you, you can give a testimony. You have tried. <laughs> you have tried. They have not listened to you. But here is Paul. He's in a ship. There is a storm. The ship is almost breaking. And the Lord gives him a word of knowledge and tells him, no one will perish. You have given you, you and the people with you in that ship. You are a year, you are a father, you are a mother, you are a sister, you are a brother. And it's like everyone around you is looking up to you. But God is saying this morning, none of them will perish. Praise God. None of them. Because it's not about you, it's about who? It's about God. And then they continue to sail and sail. And then we go to chapter 28. When they got to a, a beach called Melita. On an island called Melita. Chapter 28. Let's read from verse 1, all of us. And when they had escaped, then they found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul ungathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a piper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature, hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt, this man is a mandala, whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. But he took off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Verse 6. However, they were expecting that he would swell or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time, they saw no arm came to him. They changed their mind. And they said he was hung. What did they do? They changed their mind. Remember, these guys are coming from a very huge storm. And when you read chapter 27, the ship didn't make it. They got to a place whereby they were told, those who can swim, let them go fast. Let them swim and those who can't swim, ask your neighbor, do you know how to swim? Because <laughs> the storm will be tough in this life that God has called us. But you have to have an, another. God has given us the mandate to, to learn and to have different skills in different things. Don't just stick to your career and say, oh, this is the best I can do in this life. God has called you to know different skills and he's the giver of gifts, and he gives them freely to whoever deserves or whoever asks of him. So now, they are in a storm. The ship is almost breaking. They have thrown all the food. They have not eaten for 14 days just because of time. Then now, the ship is now breaking because of the storm. I do not know. When the ship, 
I do not know what, how the situation, how the state you came to church this morning in. But I want to encourage someone. Those who could not swim, they were told, whatever piece that is left of the ship, hold it, and it will take you to the other end. And today, this morning, maybe you could be holding on something. Maybe it's a piece of marriage that has remained. But I want to encourage you. The Lord is saying, hold on to that piece. And you shall make it to the safe side. Praise God. Maybe you came here and the only money you have is for lunch today. But the Lord is saying, I know you. And I know where I'm taking you. Maybe you had not had food for 14 days like they had. And you're not fasting. But the Lord is saying, I know that story. And I know where you're, I'm taking you. Remember I'm talking about the journey. And the journey that Lord took, to, uh, took Paul through. And it's the same journey is taking each one of us. And I do not know where you are in your journey. But the Lord is saying, he's very much aware. But the end is sure because you are his child. So be encouraged this morning. And as they continued, they got to Malita. And now, the beautiful thing that we have read. The barbarians. The people of Malta. Who did not believe in their language. Who never spoke their language. Who did not know their God. And I'm talking the God of Paul. Eh? Remember these other things were, these other people were saved because of who? Paul. So they get to Malta and these people started giving them kindness. They welcomed them. They even lit a fire for them. Isn't it? And this morning, in our journey, you can agree with me. At times, God will sustain you. To where people don't speak your language. People don't know you. Because he's a God. He's the creator of all the universe. And God sustained the 276 that were in that ship. They all got safe to the shore or to the island. And now something happened, and that's what we have read in chapter 28. And Paul, as they were just gathering sticks to make fire, remember it is cold, it is winter, they have just come from a storm, others were swimming like I don't know how many meters, then now they get to the shore, and these people who did not understand their language, God commanded them to make fire for them and, and to, to, save, to serve them. And then finally, something happened strange, and we have read in chapter 28, that what happened, there came a snake. Let me use a snake. It's used piper, depending on the version of the Bible you're using. And then it did what? It bite who? It bite Paul. And remember, Paul is the, the representative. These other people are being saved because of one, one person. Through all the Bible, I want to encourage someone. When God wants to do something mighty, he uses one, one man. When he wanted to deliver the children of Israel, whom did he use? Moses. When he wanted to feed the Israelites in Egypt, whom did he use? Joseph. When God wanted to show that his heart was broken or he was hurt. He used the prophet Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. And today the Lord is in. You may look at yourself and say, oh, I come from the least of the least. But then I'm the fourth born in our family. <laughs> you may look at your position. You may look at yourself. You may look at your education. You may look at the things that have not happened in your life that you thought they will happen as your child and as you've grown and as you've walked in this life of on this journey of life but i want to encourage someone there's a god who knows there's a god who is concerned there's a god who says i'll use you you're my person and he's walking the journey with you that makes the journey lighter and despite the storms of life so this snake comes and fastens itself to Saul. And what did the people of Malta say? He's a mandara. Let's pause there and let me say something. Was Paul a mandara? Yes, he was. <laughs> Remember, he began by giving you a history that he used to persecute the church. So he used to? To mandara. He used to kill. He used to make people killed or persecute them. But these people had no idea who Paul was, isn't it? But do you know, there comes a time in this journey of life that even people, people that know you or don't know you, they will accuse you. 
and remind you of the life that you lived before you accepted Jesus and want to remind you even you are a Paul is told you are a murderer. But then they are, they are using the, the, the what they are seeing. They, are not, they don't know Paul. They are using what they are seeing. Aya, a snake. And chooses this man of God. And fastened. It did not only bite. It did what? It fastened itself on Paul's hand. But what did Paul do? Threw it. There was a miracle there. And God, when they saw that he had not swollen, because they expected him to die. Because now, uh, it is a snake that has done what? And the snake was a poisonous one, isn't it? So when he uh, doesn't, doesn't swell, he doesn't die, the people change their mind. <laughs> and what did they say? He's a God. I want to stop there and preach. Today you have come to the house of God. You have walked on journey. I do not know your journey. But I want to assure you that God knows your journey. He knows from the time you were born and he knows your sunset. Praise God. But what he's interested in is the process. Paul is put in chain. Remember, he was, going, he was entered to Rome. He's put in a chain. Chains is tied up. And you would think, oh, I think God called me. But he called him bound. One as if you were. Maybe you're waiting for a time when things will be all in line. So that now you can do what God has called you to do. But I'm here this morning to tell you, if he has called you, and things seem to be bound in your life, he's telling you, let's go. Because he knows the end, you do not know. Praise God. And this morning is calling someone to partner with him so that he can take you through the journey of life and take you to your destination because he knows it before the foundations of the earth. So Paul then get to the ship. Things may not be working this morning, but I want to encourage someone. People, even people that know you as a believer and they don't believe in your message. The Bible says, God has them in your plan, and he will give them to you. He gave Paul the inmates, 276, and he gave them, he also gave him Rome. And today we are beneficiaries of the message of Paul, isn't it? Because God had chosen and purposed that he will do something in his generation. So he continues, when the people changed their mind, they said in verse 6, because they were expecting. You know those people who expect, because they know the outcome, when you do this, the outcome is, but there's a God in heaven who frustrates the expectation of men. There's a God in heaven. And the Bible says in First Corinthians first, chapter 26, chapter 1, verse 26, he says God uses the foolish things of this world to shame who? The wise. So they expected Saul to do what? To swell and die. But did it happen? No. So what happened? When they saw the expectations were not met, he did what? They changed. And what did they say? Maybe you've been running away from persecution. I want to encourage someone. Maybe you've been running away from suffering. But maybe that is the only thing that God is using to ensure that others around you or your family knows that you are being called by God. So this morning, as you have come to the house of God, I want to encourage someone. The journey may have taken long. The things that you expected to happen may not have happened. But the Lord is saying, he still has your end. He's your destiny keeper. He can still change your destiny if you do not know even where you are going this morning. So he, when the, Paul did not swell, we see that they, they raised and said he was God. And remember the God of heaven and commanding the barbarians to serve these people. And they served them three months. They were there for three months. Tell your friend or your neighbor, three months. They were there for three months. And when they were there for three months, the same Paul who was, was beaten by a snake and he did not swell, and the people thought he would die, and he did not die, and now he's the one preaching. And they all brought their people, 
and they were healed. Bwana asifiwe. Persecution may appear in your life, but the Lord is using that suffering to tell you that the end and to cause someone else to believe in God. Bwana asifiwe. So when Paul ministered to them for three months, we see in the first chapter of Romans, Paul gets to Rome. And when he gets to Rome, in, in verse, let's, let's have verse 14 of Romans chapter 1. We see him thanking the barbarian. He said, the journey must have been this long. But he doesn't get to Rome bitter. Buona sifiwe. When Paul got to, to Rome, he said, I am a debtor both to Greeks and barbarian, both to wife and in his journey, he experienced all these people. And as I've said, you can attest that God in your journey, from whichever journey that you started with God, you know there's a place. You have experienced the barbarian. People accused you of things that you even don't know. People that even said, oh yeah, we fear God of Lillian. But it took all of this to get me here. It took Paul all those things. Going through the chains, people wanting to kill him, um, get into a ship which gets broken and there's, there's no food for 14 days. And the summary, they go to the, the island of Malta and there's no, there's a snake that comes and bites him. But at the end of it, he emerged to be a winner. One as few. Let's all arise. I do not know where you are in your journey with Christ. But I came with a message of hope. You may be here and you have not even started the journey, the journey of salvation. But the Lord is giving you this opportunity. And he's saying, come, because of your destiny. And I will take you to your destiny. So you can only partner with our God because he knows us. As Psalms 139 says, before we were formed in our mother's home, God knew. God knew the person you will be. He knew the place you will be. He knew today you will be seated here and hearing this message. And I want to encourage someone. If you are that person that has not started their journey with God, in this moment of prayer, you can raise up your hand. I'm not asking people to close eyes. Because you cannot be ashamed of Jesus. He is good God. So if you are there, I want you to lift up your hand if you want to begin a journey with God. He's faithful. It doesn't matter what is happening today, but he's God who can take you to your destination. Is there anyone? When everyone, and we are not closing our eyes. We want our eyes in a blonde daylight. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I do not know where you are in your journey. But I want to assure you, the same God who was with Paul in the storm, in the, in the island of Malta, is the same God who is alive today. And he's saying, do not fear. Do not be afraid. For I hold your hand and I will take you to destiny. And when you get there, do not complain. Praise Jesus. Let's close our eyes and thank God. Thank God, I do not know what you have picked this morning. I do not know where you are in your journey with Christ. But the Lord is saying, despite the peace that has been left, you can still cling to that and get to your destination. Because he's a good God. Father, we thank you this morning. We are delighted to know that you are with us in the journey of life. We are so delighted to know that you as God the author and the finisher of our faith and our life. And we thank you for this journey. We pray that you may continue helping each one of us. The Lord we will run the race looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, we bless you this morning for the gift of your word. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray.